Right, thank you so much for joining us uh, at the EACTS. Uh, this is, uh, again, uh, a CTS Net Roundtable discussion uh, at the EACTS 2018 in Milan. Uh, various topics are being discussed in this place on the innovation and evolution of uh, different scientific uh, and, uh, and surgical uh, uh, matters. However, we wanted to focus more the discussion today on on bioprosthetic, in particular the Inspiris Resilia from Edwards that is coming out now and it's been in the market for some time and it's gaining its momentum and its use versus the old uh, uh, sort of like uh, technique which has also been evolved over and over uh, through the uh, uh, span of time, Valsper root uh, replacement. For this particular topic today or debate I should say, I've uh, uh, panned for you giants on these uh, two uh, entities. Uh, on my right hand side here you all know him, Emmanuel Lansak leading the Aviateur uh, Registry, which is a multi-international registry. He's going to be talking more about it uh, to you all. Uh, Emmanuel is uh, from Paris, France. Next to him is uh, Michael Borger, the director of Leipzig uh, Heart Center. Uh, we all know him. He has a touch on all sort of like scientific and evidence synthesis out there in, in terms of uh, valve sparing, be it, or, or bioprosthetic uh, uh, root replacement or valve replacement. Rogero de Paulus, the... Uh, the uh, Vice President of the European Association 2017-2018. Uh, he also is a giant and has a long-term experience in terms of these two entities we're going to be discussing today. Now, let's round it up a little bit, gear down. Um, bioprosthetic root replacement or valve replacement has been gaining momentum over and over. Industry is actually catching up with us and they are bouncing every different valves nowadays. We see it, the sutureless, the stentless, uh, uh, you name them. On the other hand, valve sparing has been there for long, pioneered by Tyron David and it's moving on and it's moving on. I've listened to recent uh, talks from Michael on David Five and the use of it. Excellent talk uh, 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 which he delivered. I just want one thing before we jump into this. I want Emmanuel to tell us about the Aviator, uh, Aviator Registry, which is led by the Heart Valve Society, and you actually grasping a very good hand on this and uh, trying to expand it. Emmanuel. Thank you. Thank you, Mo. I think you're, you're, you're pointing a, a very important point, is, uh, is that actually industry is driving us very much toward valve replacement, while actually, according to the recommendation of the latest 2017 guidelines uh, for AI, uh, the indications is a class one indications to evaluate the repairability of the valve. Yeah. And as you have seen, yeah. uh, industry, except uh, the one that are doing conduits, uh, uh, you know, like bio conduit, like the Valsalva graft or other uh, graft like this, most of the big industry of valve is not into valve repair. They are into mitral valve repair and they True. are into aortic valve replacement. And aortic valve repair is just the forgotten field okay. that okay. needs to be, uh, that where we need to yeah. <laughs> have an involvement of industry because as you know, uh, uh, any techniques without the support of industry will never reach routine in every department. Okay, excellent that, So message. that that's excellent my message. first point yeah. because I think this is very important to say yeah. it. And particularly with the new prosthesis that are coming up where there is actually no evidence compared to valve sparing, which has a good long-term evidence of uh, improvement of patient's outcome. But as you pointed out, uh, the Aviator Registry is a very important effort where uh, all uh, of us actually, we are a, a part of, uh, of it. And, um, and all the leader group, Roy Sales group as well, and, uh, and uh, Hamburg group as well, uh, and all across the Atlantic and Europe, we have decided to pool our forces and have a common registry. This is a unique effort of evaluation. This is an excellent where point, yeah. Everybody, every team is putting, and this is open to any center, yeah. every team is putting his consecutive patients, repair or replacement, within the indications of repair, so which is aneurysms, yep. bicuspid, tricuspid valve with AI or without AI, and uh, in order to have long-term evaluations of patient's outcome after repair 
or replacement. And Excellent. in that sense, I think we can raise the better level of evidence. But it is a challenge, but that's a unique thing. And, uh, and uh, it, thank you for asking for that, because that's very important to promote our responsibility as surgeons yeah. to provide long-term patient's outcome and share it on a unique registry and, and data set that can have homogeneous comparison. Excellent, excellent uh, initiative to lead on a multinational or international level, a registry that, that can once and for all define the robust evidence out there for us to use. You said a, a very good point that this is open for all centers. Could you just let us know how many centers you've recruited, how many patients now you have on your data set, and what's the vision forward briefly, Emmanuel? There, there are more than 5,000 patients excellent, now uh, excellent. Uh, in, in the, in the the database from 50 dif uh, different countries, yeah. uh, mostly Europe, uh, North America, also in Asia, uh, some uh, even in Egypt and uh, other. Yeah. And uh, we are really wanted to have that open and that's free of participation. Excellent. The only commitment is really to <laughs> have the patients in, but not only in, to ensure the follow-up and that's the true challenge that we all know in our different teams because uh, that's difficult. But right, this is an excellent roundup of the Evita, uh, of the Aviator Registry led by the Harvard Society and noted down by Emmanuel Lansak. Michael, the preparation of today is better for a better tomorrow. Okay, are we doing that? We have different valves at the moment. We're spoiled for choice. We recently published on this. We have loads of valves, different techniques. Tavi, you led this before, uh, uh, and you've written on this excellent bicuspid aortic valve uh, 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 sort of guidelines with John Amphitriadis and the group. Where are we going with this? Now, Inspiris Resilius coming with a resistant tissue that can provide better outcome, better uh, 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 device d d technology, if you want, for in comparison to the valve sparing, that is actually technically difficult to follow, and this is quite challenging. What, what do you think of that? Well, the Inspiris valve is very interesting. Um, it has a novel anti-calcification treatment, um, which works very well in the juvenile sheep model, which is the most aggressive uh, calcification model there is. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any long-term uh, data in humans, but we have to assume, based on what we know, that the long-term results are, are going to be uh, very good. Uh, but of course, the unique thing about the valve is that the expandable uh, frame, and this will facilitate future uh, valve and valve procedures um, in yeah. that we'll be able to get a larger uh, TAVI valve into those patients. Having said that, those are aortic stenosis patients, and we're talking about AI. Yeah. And I am firmly of the opinion that for AI, valve sparing uh, surgery is the way to go. Um, earlier today, I presented some data from our center, but I also showed a great paper from uh, Tyrone David's group and uh, Uzinan then as the first author in Jack in 2017. Yeah. And they quite clearly showed with a propensity matching analysis for patients that had AI that would have been candidates for valve sparing that either got valve sparing or biological root replacement or mechanical root replacement, that the long-term survival was superior with a valve sparing and also the freedom from major adverse valve related events. Yeah. Now those were using older generations of valves, but I, I can't see the, the newer generations having such a big impact on those events that that, that will change. And therefore I still think that the uh, uh, aortic valve sparing procedure is the procedure of choice for patients with pliable uh, aortic valve cusps. Right, excellent, good point. Mm. Uh, uh, Michael split them both, uh, Rogero. Aortic stenosis, aortic, uh, uh, aortic incompetence. Uh, uh, Emmanuel supported the evidence that we need more momentum on the aortic incompetence. Valve sparing is out there. Uh, uh, different surgeons, they have different backgrounds, different uh, opinion about it. Uh, not everybody can, can do a valve sparing. Hence, uh, it's all more <coughs> within the hands of the expertise. What's your take on yes. this? This is true, but if we go back and we, we look at the history, you know, many, many years ago, was the same for the mitral valve. You know, mitral valve was perceived as a difficult technique. It still is today for so, someone. And, uh, and then in the That's result of 20 years, the result of 20 years, I don't think they were so good, our good result now with the aortic valve sparing operation. 
uh, even though the, the amount of data are not so big, there is now a good number of uh, senders that start to report 20 years after valve sparing. And valve sparing operation, aortic valve sparing operation, is certainly better than the 20 years at the, the first mitral valve. Okay. Uh, but nowadays, nobody will think ever to do a bioprosthesis in a valve, in a mitral valve that can be repaired. Okay. So my impression is the, the same. When, when we speak about the pure aortic insufficiency, and especially if there is no calcification, this is, a, you know, as, as stated in the guideline, this is an indication to do a valve sparing. Yeah. There is enough evidence, if it is not so big and large, yeah. but yeah. evidence to say that for survival and for events is much better than having a prosthesis, even though I agree that the new bioprosthesis can be better, better durability, but we are still speaking about people in the, in the range of 30 years of age, uh, where you know, if you put the bioprosthesis, and it is, it is, it has to be treated one or two or three times in his, in his lifespan, Excellent. while with the perfect, probably valve sparing operation, there is a chance he is completely cured. Yeah. Yeah, so. good point. Uh, Emmanuel, you, you, you're, you're a, a <coughs> pro aortic valve repair. Uh, the, the excellent summit that is run between the North American and the Europeans on this. This is an excellent uh, motive to push and educate people on this. A recent meta-analysis showed that there is no difference between the aortic uh, incompetence being repaired by aortic valve repair and uh, uh, was compared to aortic valve replacement. As a matter of fact, it did show that people who actually attempt aortic valve repair, they leave theater, patients leave theater with a, with a grade one or two aortic valve incompetence. What do you think of this evidence and what's your message uh, in the last five minutes? So I, I, I have to say that I disagree with the fact that there is no evidence that actually valve sparing uh, is, is, is not superior to valve replacements. There, this evidence is coming. And uh, there is under publications uh, the Caviar trial, yep. which compare remodeling with annual plasty yeah. with multicentric, yeah. uh, with mechanical bental, yeah. and uh, perioperative uh, uh, data already showed a trend towards reduced major adverse valve related events yeah. at 30 days yeah. and at four years, so that are the data that I uh, presented at the New York uh, Aortic Symposium last May and that are under a, a, a publication process uh, showing that at four years there is a significant reduction of valve related deaths when you have a valve sparing compared to bental and also a significant reduction of major adverse valve related compared to uh, mechanical bental. Yeah. This is mostly due to bleeding events but also endocarditis and therefore there is also no uh, uh, different in terms of valve related reoperations because there are a fair number of patients that are reoperated when they have their valve yeah. replaced yeah. because of endocarditis. This yeah. is way higher than when you have your valve spare. And this is the same thing as for the yeah. mitral. And uh, in all series, when you have the valve replaced with a bioprosthetic valve or a mechanical valve, you have 0.5% per year of endocarditis. Those patients are going to be reoperated. And uh, so, and there is uh, uh, the meta-analysis from Annika Takenberg group showed yeah. on more than 8,000 uh, uh, bentals that uh, there is uh, uh, 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 uh, per patient year rate of reoperations, which means 5% uh, at 10 years and 5 to 7% at 10 years. And mostly those guys, uh, those guys are reoperated because those patients are reoperated because of uh, endocarditis. Michael, Can I make a comment on that as well? Make a comment yeah. and make a final message to take home because the producers are telling me five minutes press okay. time. Fire away. Yeah, I agree with what Emmanuel says. There is some evidence showing that the valve sparing is superior to, to uh, valve conduit replacement. Um, as I said, the, the paper from Tyrone David, we're also presenting a paper here where we have decreased bleeding rates over, over time, uh, superior perioperative outcomes, less pacemakers, less death, although that's probably uh, uh, surgical expertise. Yep, yep. Um, but also the, uh, uh, the, the long-term uh, long prosthetic valve known complications are definitely less. And 
even if the valve repair does fail, which is an unusual circumstance, the next operation is a redo AVR. It's a redo aortic valve replacement. It's not a redo bentol. When a bentol fails, it's a redo bentol. And that's a more, you have to remobilize the coronary yeah. buttons. Whereas with yeah. a failed aortic valve repair, you don't. Also, so that's one other. May also, in case of endocarditis, is another big operation in the bentol case where for valve sparing, even though the incidence is very, very low, when happen is also easily, much easily solved. And, and to quote the old saying uh, for that meta-analysis, I know the meta-analysis you're talking about, but pulling together a lot of um, poorly done studies does not make one good study. So okay. uh, I, would, I would just say, if you look at the large centers with, with really uh, expertise in this surgery, you know, this is not the type of surgery that every center should be doing and not a type of surgery that every surgeon within that center should do, should even do. in the big volume centers. Um, but I think it speaks to a centralization of resources. And I know if I needed this or if my uh, son needed it uh, for uh, aortic root aneurysm, I would definitely send them to a valve sparing specialist. Excellent. This is a, and, yes, and Emmanuel. maybe just one final word is that also, if you've done a valve sparing, particularly if you've done an annual plasty at the bottom, we're reducing the size of the if the valve failed, which is actually very rare after a valve sparing, you can still do a percutaneous valve replacement if needed because you have a landing zone. Yeah. And that's very important, but that comes back as well again to the evaluation and that's key that every one of us, like uh, uh, Michael Ruggiero and all the groups that are involved into aortic valve repair, share a common base to raise proper evaluation Excellent. of valve sparing, valve repair, which are the primary indications, like for the mitral, and then evaluate also the replacements to see the long-term outcome of every procedure, because so far, repair seems to prove better survival than replacement, and I think this is very important this is to resist message. to the push of industry in that direction. That, that is logical, exactly like this for the mitral valve. So exactly, that's, no, that's very important. Listen, we're pressed on time. I really thank you for joining us today uh, and uh, being on board for this very controversial topic. You've heard the messages from the giants on this uh, particular uh, problems and uh, you've heard their opinions and you've heard the initiative on the aviateur and you've heard their skills and their evidence that they're synthesizing, although it's observational data, but they are really forcing out the evidence uh, for you. You've been with Mo Bashir for Aortic Portals for CTSnet. Thank you very much for joining us.